Okay, so before I start even telling you about what today's video is about, let me apologize in advance for all the noise that you may be hearing because there's a lot of construction work going on in the neighborhood and other noises that you may hear. Sometimes airplanes fly over the house. So if you hear something in the background like that, please pardon me. It happens. That's what I have to deal with in my neighborhood. So yeah. Let's get into today's video. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you what I had done two years prior to posting my first YouTube vlog. If you've already posted your first video or maybe a couple more videos, I think you should still stick around for some new perspective to change your outlook on your YouTube journey. And my name is Kwame. I'm a documentary filmmaker, photographer, and voiceover artist based in Accra, Ghana. And you're welcome to my YouTube channel, It's Okay. This channel is my attempt to make sense of life and human experience in general, and I am happy that you are here. This is going to be more of a story time and lesson kind of message here today. And uh, I would love for you to stick around. I promise it's going to be worth your while. Now, I know we can all agree that YouTube as a platform and the kind of status that it has given a lot of the big names here makes it very attractive for you to want to be a YouTuber. And that's why you may be here considering starting your own channel. And I got to say that, I mean, YouTubers are celebrities in their own right. YouTube stars are living their dream lives and we see it here every day. And believe it or not, this is how some people actually make a living. Creating content here is someone's full-time job. They take care of themselves and their families and live the, live the lives they want to live all by creating. So this is a pretty big deal. And like everything that gives you a better social standing, people want to be like you. And that's why there are a lot of people like me and maybe you who might be starting your YouTube journey here for the opportunities that might come or you might come across while creating content. So for a documentary filmmaker that I am, um, my first ever vlog post got me a client job. So it's pretty impressive what your presence online and advertising what you can do can do for you. And the bottom line is, if you have a channel or you intend on starting a channel, you aspire to benefit from putting in the work as much as doing what you love. And that is the truth. You can't run away from that. But there's a reason for this video. And like other aspects of our lives, we often find ourselves comparing our own journey to the kind of lives we see others live. And we seldom ask how much work goes into becoming like the people we admire so much. And another thing is that we often see the beauty of what is now and we don't take a lot of things into consideration, like how many years they have been doing what we see as the perfect lives they may be living now. Or how much work went into it before they caught their first big break or their big break, or even worse, how much work goes into it to keep up with their newfound responsibility of staying at the top, which is the most difficult part. So it's not just all glitz and glam. So let me take you back to two years ago before I even posted my first vlog. If you haven't watched my YouTube videos, you'd have probably heard me say time and time again that I am an overthinker, so it's no secret now. Granted, you know, there are times when I act on impulse, so that makes me a little unpredictable, but big decisions like quitting your job as a full-time radio broadcaster with a very reputable organization while making a decent living can't be an impulsive one. No way. So before I started my YouTube channel, I had been binge watching a lot of YouTube videos. Or should I call it research and inspiration? Yeah, for two years, you know, I'd sit and watch people like Peter McKinnon, Matt Diavella, Nathaniel Drew, YC, Caleb Pike, uh, Potato Jet, and others religiously. Every day, I'd learn something new. New cameras, new lights, new microphones, budget-friendly ones, not-so-budget-friendly ones, tips and tricks, hacks, all of them. And in the summer of 2018, when I took my annual leave, I decided to use that time to do a short film course in the Netherlands. And um, I attended summer school at HKU in Utrecht. And look, it was one of the best experiences of my life coming into contact with the art of filmmaking. All the things that I learned was just such an eye-opening experience for me, I gotta say. And part of the reason why I also decided to go into documentary filmmaking was because of our course lecturer and how he light up when he spoke about filmmaking and storytelling. So after that, 
I continued my binge watching of YouTube and I've been making purchases for the gear based on recommendations from these people that I admire so much on YouTube. I acquired my gear in bits over the period of time, not all at once, and I bought all the things I needed to start a decent YouTube channel in the space of two years while still learning. So that's how I did it. And then it got to a point where I knew that this was it. I wanted to grow to become someone else in my storytelling journey. I wanted to become a filmmaker, a full-time filmmaker. So I quit my job in December 2019 and started 2020 afresh. At this point in my life, all I needed to do was to start practicing all that I had learned in the past couple of years with lighting, sound, shooting flat, and whatnot. And putting all together to tell my stories as a self-development YouTuber by sharing what I'm learning on my new journey and also sharing videos like this with you. So I was prepared to start this YouTube channel or YouTube journey and I knew it was in no way going to be rosy for me because even though all these vlogs I watched from the big time YouTubers looked so good, I had a fair idea of the amount of work that went into just making one, just one of them. Not having any knowledge like this will have you like starting and quitting your YouTube channel in a few weeks because you will be overwhelmed. You will struggle with consistency and ultimately you stop creating because you didn't psych yourself up for the long haul. And that's what will happen. So I admire these, these big names even more. And I also lowered my expectations of having it all in a short space of time. I keep saying this in a lot of videos. Remember that nobody owes you anything. Do your bit. Most of these big names have been practicing their filmmaking since they were teenagers. They have videos dating back to 10, 15 years ago. And they have the experience and they've earned that top, that top spot that they are. So if you are thinking of starting your YouTube channel, whatever genre you want to make content on, just don't look at the finished product of other creators and jump in head first. You know, it's good to be inspired, but it's better to be prepared. I don't know if that's uh, an existing quote. If it's not, you know where to attribute it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So all I'm saying is it takes a ton of work and you too can do it. But remember the work part and you might as well also want to check out one of my videos about the one hack that I live by. And if you like this video, yes, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps YouTube to suggest it to other viewers. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified when I post a new video. And I hope to catch you again in the next video. Stay safe. Thanks for watching and peace.